Hello. Hi, everyone. My son is here learning how to be a good neurofeedback clinician and working training daddy's brain. So I just wanted to give you a little glimpse of what we do here. Yep. I've got my little mini timer and I'll show you my screen. What's up, Tori? How you doing? So this is how it looks in the neurofeedback room, bro. You get to watch your own. The big screen is what I'm watching and you can see my brain waves on the right hand side and the small screen. And the only reason there's so much activity is because I'm talking while I'm training. I've got my speed up to 42 hertz. And it feels good. Yeah. Excuse me. You see? And sometimes you get a little tear, get a little teardrop falling, a little bit of fatigue, right? But uh, it's good stuff. And here's my time. See? I'm about halfway through. But this is my morning meditation. Well, afternoon, because I started at exactly 12 noon. And uh, so I'm going to go until exactly 1 o'clock. And the other side is more beautiful. If you could hear what I'm hearing, well, actually, maybe you can. Nah, I don't want to take my headphones off, but if you could hear what I'm hearing, you would hear beautiful music, a little bit of white noise going in and out, depending on how high my delta waves are, and uh, a gong every time my brain crosses the uh, threshold of 42 hertz. I'm synchronizing, I'm using synchrony in the gamma zone. So we'll call this gamma synchrony neural feedback. And uh, isn't that graphic beautiful, the big one? And as I watch and listen to the headphones, okay, the software is designed so that it trains both hemispheres, the left and right hemisphere of my brain, to work in synchrony with each other and the optimal reward frequency, the reward frequency is 42 hertz. The software will only let you take it up to 40 hertz on the dial, but then you can inch it up with the arrow at 0.25 hertz every time. On my head, I'm training the frontal lobe always. I always train the frontal lobe. And not the occipital lobe, this time I'm training the parietal lobe, which is the high end. I'm going to turn it around and show you. I'm training my occipital, my parietal lobe up here, and not, not, the, uh, not the occipital lobe. Uh, parietal lobe has more to do with physical tension and uh, and less to do with emotional tension. So I'm getting a high brain train today. It feels really good. This is a good meditation, Tori. It really is, man. It really is. Especially since the result is not like regular meditation where, you know, you end up, uh, you know, kind of tired, whatever. Uh, no, this is, this is meditation and it's like doing jump rope or uh, running a sprint with your brain because it's actually work. Now you can see how the screen responds. Um, like I'm gonna blink my eye right now and show you how, how the screen is gonna change. Okay. You see how it changed, how it flickered? That's the feedback. You see right there, I'm doing it again. There you go. You see how it flickers? And uh, you can see how my brain waves were affected on the right hand side too. I'm gonna do it one more time. Blink, blink, blink. You see? You see all of that change?
So it's definitely giving me feedback directly from the brain. And you do this for about an hour. Well, actually, a normal session is about a half hour, right? But if you do this for an hour, if you can work up to it, uh, it's a really, really good workout to have every day. And then eventually you start to notice that subtle changes in the way your mind works uh, in your life start to happen. You'll find that, wow, you know, I used to be reactionary. Uh, you know, I used to have, you know, road rage incident if somebody cut me off or whatever. And now I don't, you know, now I, I, I really don't. And and if you happen to have relationships in your life, especially with narcissistic people that like to try to get get your goat, right, or like to like to try to get at you in an emotional sense, then those relationships are going to change because those people won't have the ability to affect you as much as they did before. Uh, so it does have a very uh, positive... Hi, Liz. How are you? It does have a very positive effect in the quality of your life. Um, the first thing we notice with neurofeedback is an improvement in your quality of sleep. Okay, you, you're going to sleep much more deeply. How are you doing, Liz? And uh, I'm just doing my, my morning neurofeedback, but I started at noon, so it wasn't, uh, it wasn't really in the morning. It was my exactly 12 noon or 12.01 neurofeedback. And, you know, we all get impatient, right? We're sitting here and we're like, well, when is this going to end, right? So I've got the old faithful hourglass here, right? So it, it's it's calming to be able to look over to the left and see my hourglass. And, and I know pretty much how long I have when I'm in session. You can see I'm training my frontal lobe. This is ground. And I'm also training my parietal lobe. Okay. I'm not training very far down on the back of my head. I'm training pretty high this time. And, uh, you know, this is just con still considered front to back, right? Um, but it's frontal lobe to parietal lobe. And like I said, I've already gone through infralow neurofeedback. During infralow, you can watch a movie. Uh, or you can play a video game. We have a number of video games, even with controllers, right? The same Xbox controller that you use on an Xbox or a PlayStation. Uh, we have video games, and my son loves to do it. He can sit here and play Tropical Heat or Race Car or whatever all day. And, uh, and then you can move into Alpha Theta, where there are two reward frequencies, um, one at 10 hertz in the Alpha Zone and the other at 7 hertz in the theta zone and that's very good for um, bringing to the conscious level any repressed memories or repressed emotions that you may have it's a good emotional purge it's also good for creative people because in alpha theta neurofeedback um, uh, you're getting into the theta zone, right? You're operating at 7 hertz and 10 hertz simultaneously, which is a bit of a challenge, believe it or not, um, because, you know, your temptation is to go to sleep. Theta is a sleep frequency, but it's also the, the frequency of the subconscious mind. So that's very, very healing spiritually, psychologically, emotionally. Hi, Lynette. How are you? And, uh, and then when we want to get into the advanced neurofeedback, which is where we are right now. This is synchrony, synchrony neurofeedback. And uh, during synchrony, we are able to uh, synchronize. We're synchronizing the left hemisphere with the right hemisphere. And we have the entire spectrum of... Uh, Hello, Motor. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to have to decline this until I finish training. Uh, during synchrony neurofeedback, we're synchronizing the left and the right hemispheres of the brain to work together. And uh, like I said, we have the entire spectrum from zero hertz 
all the way up to 40, and then we can inch up past 40, all the way up to 50 hertz. Now, zero to five hertz, that's delta. That's the delta range. Uh, five to seven or eight hertz, that's the theta range, right? That's light sleep. Delta is deep sleep. Theta is light sleep, the dream sleep, or REM, rapid eye movement sleep. And alpha is around 9 to 11 hertz, around 10 hertz. Uh, alpha is where we are most of, most of the time, or where we would like to be most of the time, where we are awake and relaxed. And beta is around 20 hertz. Beta, you can say beta is like when you're listening attentively, attentively to your teacher at school, right? That's when you're at 20 hertz or you're, you're listening to a, a speech or a movie and you're thinking. High beta is 25 hertz. And at high beta, that's equivalent to um, like if you're working, at a, working out a math problem or like my cousin Tori does when he's doing his invention and his inventing and and he's thinking uh about what he's doing and concentrating on how to solve a problem um then you reach the gamma zone at 30 hertz and above now the interesting thing is that if you train in beta it is good if you want to train at beta uh in order to pass a test if you're going to take a test or something or you want to concentrate on a job um but along with that higher level of cortical arousal that comes from that uh, from beta, right, or high beta, there's also a little bit of physical arousal. You're going to be kind of tense, just like if you're at work all day and you're concentrating and you're thinking and thinking all day. And, and then at the end of the day, you're like, oh, man, I could use a glass of wine or something because, you know, my mind is all tied in knots. Well, that's what you get when you do beta and high beta training. But interestingly enough, when you get up into the the um, the gamma zone, 30 hertz and above, the gamma zone has an opposite physical reaction. Your mind is moving very fast. Your mind is going very fast, but the body is extremely relaxed. And that's what we call the flow state, right? Or the zone. So basically what I'm doing is I'm training myself in the zone. And once I do gamma synchrony training, and I do this every morning, then I can sit down. You know, the interesting thing is I get to work and I immediately go, oh, man, I got so much work to do. I don't have time to train. But if I sit down and start working, you know, I, I, I won't really be as productive as I would be if I actually took an hour out of my day and sat down and did this. A simple hour of gamma synchrony. Now I'm up to 42 hertz. Gamma synchrony neural feedback for one hour. And after gamma, I can sit down and do 10 hours worth of work in literally four hours. You would not believe how productive and how focused you will be once you train your brain at the high frequency of gamma. It's uh, it's like the most intensive meditation you've ever you've ever done. And except it's a focus meditation. In fact, if you go to any search engine or go to YouTube or go to Google and ser search for synchrony neural feedback, the first video you're likely to find is going to have a Buddhist monk sitting next to a couple of ladies and that one of those ladies is my instructor at the EEG Institute, uh, who is Miss Sue Othmer. And what they did was they went to a temple and met with monks who were obviously professional uh, meditators, uh, their whole lifelong meditators. And I want you to watch the video because the, the video has some very interesting observations by the monk. Um, you know, like I said, who has spent his entire life in meditation and uh, in the study of the of consciousness. He said that when he did synchrony, which is what I'm doing right now, he said that when he did synchrony at uh, 10 hertz, which was alpha, the experience was similar to his meditation, but at about 40 percent 
of his intensity. And then the next day they gave him gamma synchrony, which is what I'm doing, except they trained him at 40 hertz. And I'm training myself right now at 42 hertz. And uh, his observation was that the gamma synchrony brought him to 80% of his most intensive meditation, uh, the way he could bring himself. Now, this guy spent, you know, 30, 40 years of his life sitting on a mountain and meditating. And if I'm able to reach 80% of what he's able to reach with all of those years of meditation, instantly by using this software and hardware, I think that's pretty good. It's giving me a jump and it saves me a lot of years of uh, wearing an orange robe and, and, and actually doing real meditation. Now, I'm not knocking meditation. Meditation is very valuable. But neurofeedback is definitely an aid for those of us who want to become good meditators and for those of us who want to become spiritually centered and um, cognitive, cognitively clear. And uh, the effects, you know, are pretty interesting. And you get to know your own head, right? The, the more, you know, the more uh, neurofeedback training you do to yourself, um, you learn where on your own scalp affects what affects what aspect of behavior. And, uh, you know, you can train along your somatosensory band or what they call the motor cortex. The motor cortex is uh, like the band on a headphone. It goes right from ear to ear, right across the top of your head. There's a location on the motor cortex that corresponds with every area of your body. And uh, it controls feeling as well as control of all of your limbs and all of your all of your body. So the athletes, people that come in for athletic training, the motor cortex is a good place to train. Another place, good place to train is the uh, occipital lobe or even below the occipital lobe, because then you're training your cerebellum, a well-developed cerebellum is what makes athletes superstars, right? I mean, you know, no one, is, no one has the uh, development of the cerebellum like Tiger Woods and uh, Michael Jordan, okay? I mean, these guys, you know, you, you practice what you do physically so much, then it will have an effect on the development of the cerebellum. The brain is a fascinating thing. I am absolutely fascinated with the brain. And, um, you know, I highly, I highly recommend giving yourself some brain training, you know, and if, if, you know, any of my LA friends would like to come and get some free training in exchange for their testimonial, I totally invite you to do that. Okay. I totally invite you to do that. I've done this before and this is a labor of love for me. It's not, um, yes, of course it's a profit center for the business, um, but profit is not why I got into this. I got into this uh, to help my son. And, you know, I've, I've, I've noticed that it helps me, too. And uh, that was a, a very powerful blessing. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to zoom in, but I'm going to calm down. And I want you to see my brain waves as I calm down. Okay. This is my brain feedback. Now you see all of that orange activity, right? And every time the orange rises, that gray bar at the left on the top rises, that's the inhibit. So the objective is to turn everything blue. Now, of course, I'm thinking and I'm talking to you guys. So that's where the orange bumps are coming from. So I'm going to give myself a moment of silence and I'd like you guys to watch Watch the blue graph in the middle and watch how my brain responds and calms down. You see? And it's like anything else, any other kind of training, this is giving me feedback. So eventually, if you do this enough, 
you will be able to control your brain. You'll be able to actually know when your mind is calm and when your mind is not. A sea of blue is what you want. I'm able to deliberately calm my entire brain across the entire spectrum of frequencies. You see how all the orange disappeared until I start talking? That blue is what you want. That's the objective. That means that you're inhibiting all of the frequencies except for 42 hertz. Okay, now you see session paused, right? So it's been an hour and my, uh, let's close this back up. My hourglass is complete. My session is complete. Now I'll show you what happened here. Uh, let's go a little bit closer, okay? And now we can take a look at my graphs. Now, this is what we do at the end of a session. All right, we're gonna come up here to the graphs, right? Now, what does this mean? Red here is delta, purple is theta, turquoise is alpha, yellow is beta, and white is high beta. 
Now I can scrunch up the time so that I can compress my entire session and you let you see what happened the whole time. Okay, now in the beginning there was not much activity. Well, this is before I went live and this is after I went live. So you can see that while I was talking to you guys, my thetas started to rise, right? I was still in control of alpha and beta and high beta. I was still very relaxed, but for some reason, uh, once I got to talking to you guys, um, my thetas rose and my deltas rose, okay? And that's fine, that's fine because I was talking. But the most important thing to look at here is this graph at the bottom. On this graph, every time you see a spike, that means that my brain was in synchrony, left and right hemisphere of my brain was in synchrony at the target frequency, the target frequency being 42 hertz, right? I was training my brain at 42 hertz. Now, this is my left side, left brain. This is my right brain, right? This is the composite signal of both sides of my brain, both hemispheres of the brain. OK, and like I said, every time I think or do any mental activity, you're going to see little spikes here. Hi, Layla. How are you? You're going to see little spikes here. Whenever these spikes, these peaks show up, that's called. Uh, well, I guess we could say high stress, high tension uh, or what we might call undesirable brainwave activity. And that's going to make this inhibit bar rise up, okay? When the inhibit bar rises at that millisecond of time, right, um, it's going to make the screen blurry. It's going to bring down the volume of the main screen. And so my brain is going to do what it has to do to make the screen clear again. It's just like if you were in a room reading and someone were to flick the lights on and off, right? Your eyes, your pupils are going to dilate and constrict to make sure that there is not too much or too little light entering your iris so that you can continue to read, right? Or if you drive into a tunnel, your, your eyes are going to dilate, your pupils are going to dilate. Well, the eyes are attached directly to the brain and you're, you don't have to tell your brain to do that, okay? So that's what's going on, except, you know, it's not you know, my eyes, it's these probes that are on my head, right? And where they are on my head. And so therefore, it's detecting the activity of my neocortex exactly underneath those probes on my scalp. Electroencephalograph technology, EEG technology, right? So I go ahead and stop my training session. And the the software now calculates my entire session, okay? And once that's done, once it's been calculated, it'll load it up here in this screen. And all of the results that I showed you here on the graphs are going to be available on my final report, okay? And then when the final report is ready, and of course it's been an hour-long session, so it's going to take a while uh, for the report to be generated. But once that report has been generated, then I can print it out or I can save it as a PDF and then we can track your progress, the progress of your brain training from session to session, which is to say we can track, we can track how you respond, uh, whether or not uh, you were able to, and believe me, it's training. The more you do anything, the better you get at it, okay? And that goes from training your body at the gym to training your brain here at the Biometrics Health Center. And, uh, yeah, so that's it. That's pretty much it, okay? So then we take off the headphones, okay? And, uh, and we pull off the EEG. EEG leads, right? Very easy. Okay, and keep those clean. And uh, use a little alcohol on a
paper towel. Now the, the EEG uh, juice, I guess you could say, the gel is water soluble, but uh, as we know, alcohol is a much better solvent than water. So alcohol gets it off a lot quicker and it also helps to be bald. So I highly recommend you shave your head like me, right? Everybody should be bald like me because I'm bald. <laughs> anyway, you don't have to be bald. I have a rat tail comb and I am able to uh, separate your hair. Okay, even you, Tori. I'm here. I, I can do neurofeedback with all your hair, too. Because, <laughs> you know, I love you, man. And, uh, yeah, so here we are. Here we are at the health center. Kai Kai, man. Say hi, man. Hi. Kai's in his office. Otherwise known as the neurofeedback center. I mean, the biomagnetic paratherapy office. Yes. Okay, so we do biomagnetic paratherapy in here. And, uh... Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Trust me. Trust me. And, uh, yeah, then we can start the day. And look at how pretty it is out here, man. It's raining. It never rains in Southern California, but it is raining today. I love it. Actually, you know what? Let's go outside and see what's going on. Let me turn this around. Look at this beautiful rainy day, huh? We don't get rain like this in Southern Cal. So when we do, I love it. I actually think I might take my plants out and uh, get it some free rain water. My plants always seem to do better when, uh, when I give it rain water. I need to take these suckers out. Say hi to my Orisha. All right. So yeah, I very rarely use the phone to go live from the office because I like using my big giant... Um, microphone and stuff but yeah i mean i hope that was instructive and informative um like i said it's the most it's the most important crucial time in my day the most enjoyable thing that i do during the day it, it's uh the definition of me time my me time and uh and i love it i love being able to uh, to get my brain training done. <sighs> and it feels really good. Uh, thank you guys for joining. It's a wonderful holiday. I mean, uh, like I said, a wonderful rainy weekend. And uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It's just a. It's just great. It's just great. It feels very blissful uh, when the two hemispheres of the brain are brought together, and you know, and and in synchrony because the two halves don't necessarily operate, you know, in synchrony with each other. Um, it feels really good, and the gamma zone of uh, frequency, like I said, it's a very high frequency, but the physical response is, is the opposite, it's reversed. You become very relaxed, you become physically relaxed while the brain is going a million miles an hour, and it's great. That's that's the zone, that's the flow state, that's what you want. I mean, like if I, I'm not a good basketball player, uh, Howard and my, my man Terry and all the people that I know. Matter of fact, every brother I know knows that I'm not a good basketball player. However, if I were to be shooting some free throws right now, I'd probably make more. Uh, I'd probably sink more than I would miss right now because I'm in the flow state. My mind is moving very quickly. Um, I'm, I'm very, very much in sync 
uh, uh, mentally and uh, and I'm very relaxed physically. So now I'm not going to. Um, oh, wow. My graphics are really messing up. I'm not going to uh, try uh, to do anything physical today. I'm actually going to sit down and try to. Um, I wonder if the fact that I'm in the same room uh, with uh, my computer is that my uh, my signal is messing up. But I want to thank you guys for watching. I'm going to have to uh, tune out now. I think my graphics are messing up. And I'm going to go live again from the main computer. Like right now, immediately. Because I can see my graphics are messing up right now. Thanks for joining. Bye-bye.